Hey everybody, so looking at some Canadian names, some of the lesser known names, and it's a little bit frustrating to find these on charts, and I would imagine that after this boom in the Canadian stock world, that we are going to see charting and other services catch up to fill the demand, because there's obviously a void, and the fact that we can't see a lot of these names on charts is pretty annoying. So, I'm going to be looking at QRSRF, which is Tinley Beverage, and this is the OTC version. Can't get the Canadian version on a chart. SPLIF is nutritional high. Can't get the Canadian version on a chart. I do have EMH, Emerald Health, and also NSP, Naturally Splendid. Those two are on the charts. But before I get into these names, obviously they are much higher risk and higher reward. And me as a day trader and a trader in general, I would not be playing these names, number one, because of all the gaps, the sparse volume. You have times here, days that you have less than a thousand dollars traded back in end of october here on qrsrf i know in the canadian names you have more but even looking at some of these canadian names back in october here on naturally splendid we had a day where the volume was very low and looking at emh even just on november 10th we had volume of sixty five thousand dollars in the entire day so the point being it's very very high risk very high reward it does make sense to try and find the laggards in the sector now that the big names are getting popular because money does trickle out down to these names. You can see EMH in the past four days has gone from the mid 80s all the way up. It made a 100% move over that time. So huge moves are there. But in, in personally, in my opinion, what I did with the U.S. marijuana stocks after I made a ton of money in the boom in 2014 is I did go into the laggards and... I took about 10% of all my profits and put them in lotto plays. And I got to be honest, all of those lotto plays didn't do anything. So just need to be aware there are going to be tons more Canadian. If it's anything like the U.S. sector, you're going to see the amount of Canadian marijuana companies balloon to 500 plus percent. If there were 10 names before this boom, there's going to be 50 names after this boom. And a lot of them are going to be scams. I don't know this, how strict the Canadian exchange listings are, but... We went from eight U.S. marijuana companies to over 300 in a few years, and I would say 90% of them are complete scams. Some of them were companies, oil and gas companies that went under, just changed their name, threw together a little business plan that really meant nothing, and then didn't do anything else after that. And they saw some interest because of the name change, but they didn't really do anything. So you need to be aware of all of this. It all played out in the U.S. market. And there is potential of that occurring in the Canadian market as well. Regulators are going to have their hands full. So let's get into it. QRSRF. And I know it's going to be different on the Canadian side, but we can at least look at the patterns here. So the daily chart is definitely seeing a move to the upside. We've gone from $0.02 cents up to $0.48. Cents. There were people loading back here. Look at this volume. That is loading before the run. And whoever was loading there made big time money. So a couple patterns I would draw. We can draw a bull flag pattern here, and a bull flag comes after a big move to the upside, and then you draw your trend lines with support and resistance essentially parallel, and when I'm drawing trend lines, you want at least three hits. Three hits make up a trend line where the price hits a trend line three times, so whenever I see two hits, I'll put that trend line there, and then I'll look for a third one to reject, but it gets confirmed after the third hit. So here I'm using the real body of the candlesticks. I'm putting my trend line at the top of the green so no candlestick closed above my downtrend resistance line. Even though these candlesticks stick out way above, they are red candlesticks which show me the close was at the base of the real body of the candlestick which means they rejected from those resistance lines. And then I do a support line and I'm looking right here at the bottom of this red and it's the exact opposite. So I want to make it so no price closes below my downtrend support line trending down support line i should say so there's a channel and that's a bull flag pattern normal healthy consolidation after a breakout and it's usually a continuation pattern leading to further upside which is the breakout that we saw occur so you can see we bounced off support rejected from resistance once twice bounced off support and then broke out so a big move to the upside and now we're consolidating again let's zoom in and draw another trend here and it's not a bull flag again the pattern does not fit that shape because we can't get parallel support and resistance lines so here i am hitting the down the bottom of the red candlesticks again no price closing below my support and i don't want any price closing above 
my downtrend resistance line. And so that's how I would draw it. It's a, a descending wedge, which is a tightening range, rejecting from the top resistance line, bouncing off support, bouncing off resistance, bounce off support, bounce off support, reject from resistance. And then this could be considered a bull break. It was fairly weak. There is an upper wick of profit taking that resistance now is at 35 cents here. But if we see follow through on Monday and a break of 35 cents and continuation to the upside, then I'm looking at where we saw bounce attempts where we topped out. So right here, the top of this candlestick, that's a high of 40.401 cents. That's a resistance. And then this next one, same thing, 0.429, that's a resistance. And then the high that we saw, 0.493, another resistance. So those are a couple patterns that you could draw. Let's get rid of those to clear this up because there's now a new uptrend support line that we can draw. And I would be looking at the low of this pullback, the lowest close that we had, and then the lowest close of this current pullback. And there's an uptrend support line to watch right there. And ideally, the bulls would hold that level on Monday and start to work back to the upside. And you can also use horizontal lines to get nice clear visuals, putting it at the top, the highest price we've seen and hitting some of those other resistance levels as well, the most notably the high of today that needs to break Monday for the bulls. So that's just a little example of charting, but overall it's a nice bull move, huge gains to be had where we've seen 400 plus percent and higher lows and higher highs is the name of an uptrend. So normal healthy consolidation after a breakout, continuation, normal healthy consolidation, and you know it's normal and healthy by volume. You don't want to see increasing bear volume on any of these pullbacks and volume is so minimal it's hard to see here but there is not big spikes in volume you have a big volume spike at the top and then another big volume spike that does show profit taking but the bulls are keeping the overall trend splif also a similar very healthy uptrend of higher lows and higher highs so we can draw an uptrend support line here as well where we hit the low of this consolidation the real body of that candlestick and it would go right there because I'm looking at the next one. I don't want to exclude this red candlestick. And now we're bouncing right off this support up here. So that's an uptrend support line that the bulls want to hold to be the strongest. And another thing to know about support and resistance is previous resistance then acts as support once the price gets above it. So you can see this resistance line here where we topped out at 0.208 cents then acted as support on the way back down. So resistance, we break out above it, make a strong move, pull back, bounce off previous resistance, now support, and consolidate a bit. So you can see on this breakout, the bull volume, notably higher than the bear volume, three big green candlestick days, then a red bear volume, and then an increase in green volume. So the bull volume is definitely outweighing the bear volume, and we need to see the bulls continue back to the upside. I've got resistance the high of this candlestick, 0.2621, and then up here, 0.288, and then the high that we've seen, 0.321. EMH, lots of gaps, huge risk, huge reward, big mover, and again, this is likely a name that I would only put money in if I were up big in the sector already, and it's gambling money in my opinion. So it is responding to the bulls. We had a nice day today. Support is 159, resistance is 173. And then up to 190, the highest price we've seen. And zooming out, looks like we're at blue sky breakout. So if we do break above 190, we should see continuation to the upside. And you can see we had a bull break and then consolidated for a month. And then a big bull volume showed back up just the past few days. Could be people rolling over profits. I'm keeping a very close eye on the U.S. sector because it was very clear that money left the U.S. sector and came to Canada after the votes and watching to see where money is shifting in and out of if we do see consolidation in those big names. Last, we've got NSP. And this is a bit more bearish. Not yet, but we're on the verge of breaking key support. You can see the higher low pattern that's been intact. And we're very close to breaking it. And we close at the low of the day. When you close at the high of the day, it indicates strength and continuation heading into the next day. When you close at the low of the day, it, can, it indicates weakness and likely continuation to the downside the following day. So here's that support line, and we pulled back to 43 cents, closed at 435. Excuse me. So if we break 43 cents, we then have a lower low and a break of the uptrend, and we'd be looking down at the previous low where support was built down at 0.385 down here. Let's put a line there for visual purposes. In terms of resistance, 
we can see clearly a lot of resistance with the price unable to get above that level right there. And I drew it there because it's hitting the top of one, two, three candlesticks. And even though we blew through it, tons of profit taking could not close above it. It's the close of the candlesticks that's important for support and resistance. You can dip below a resist or a support line, but as long as you close above it, you maintain that support. So 53 cents, bulls need to close above that level. And a close below 43 cents indicates that this strong uptrend might be in trouble and we might be heading back to the downside. So in terms of good plays to be in out of these four i don't like any of them emh is the strongest in terms of breakout potential and a strong day to end this week but this was more just to show charting and what i do with my trend lines and both of the i mean splf splif is in an uptrend and is qrs qrsrf but again it's just for me comfortability trading I would almost feel like I was flying blind if I were playing these names because I want to see a chart where I can see the five-minute chart. I want to see the volume and the hourly chart, moving averages, and just don't have that with these Canadian names. So that's that. Feel free to ask any questions, and I will see you soon.